Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome to another Yarn Snob Review. So this is the story of how I walked into my Joanne for literally one skein of yarn and came out looking like I raided the store for Black Friday. I stumbled across so many brand new Lion Brand yarns that I felt it my duty to buy at least a few of each and share them with you. The only catch is several of these are test yarns, which means they're only gonna be around for a limited time. So if you see anything that you like, drop down and find a link to it in the description and get as much as you can right now. As always, for each yarn, I'm sharing my initial reaction, likes and dislikes, and rating it on a scale from one to 10 hooks. This time is a little special though. I asked my friends on Instagram what questions they had about each of these yarns. So they weighed in a bit and I'm gonna answer those questions here in this video. Before we dive too deep into the review, we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. I've had my coffee for today, so I've moved on to water. Today's sponsor is Liz from Albany, New York. And when donating, Liz said, I taught myself to crochet this winter and I've fallen hard. Your videos are so clear and precise. You don't skip the important details that others assume I know. I made the Jesse basket so fun and I've started Tunisian crochet. You have such a lovely manner too. Well, thank you so much, Liz. That is so sweet of you. And this video is just for you, my love. Now, if you also enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in my next video. Now let's get to our first yarn. First out of the bag is Touch of Silk. At first glance, it's not a yarn that I typically gravitate towards, but I am keeping an open mind. Now Touch of Silk is a level four worsted weight blend of 60% polyester, 20% cotton, and 20% silk. According to the Lion Brand website, this yarn is considered a single ply, though in attempting to untwist it, it seems more like two ply, I don't know. The 100 gram skein works out to 219 yards and costs $6.99 when full price, which honestly feels a little bit steep to me. Okay, full disclosure, crocheting with this yarn was not very fun. It has little to no slip, so it was really fighting my wood hooks. If I were gonna use it again, I would go for a metal hook, which is gonna offer less tension than wood. Now this yarn has a rope-like quality, which has its pros and its cons. On the con side, it's not very soft. Now on the pro side, which might be more important, a yarn like this would be great for warm weather garments. It's less likely to stick to your skin and with the right stitch, it's gonna be breathable on those hot and sticky days. For all of the annoyance I had working with this yarn, it really does feel nice against my skin. Even with lotion on, the stitch fabric wasn't clingy or scratchy. I can just imagine this worked into a lightweight tee or even a tank. I just wish it was a little bit lighter weight, maybe a category two or three, to make sure the crocheted fabric wouldn't be too heavy. I'll give Touch of Silk a respectable five out of 10 hooks. There is potential if you know what to do with it. Lean into that ropey texture of the yarn and don't be afraid to use it for wearables, bags, and even some home decor projects. Unfortunately, this isn't likely to be a yarn that I'll keep in my stash. The very limited color palette is just eight shades and the unpleasant crochet experience takes Touch of Silk over the edge for me. But if I was to put Touch of Silk to the test, it would be with my summertime tank. The breathable fabric would be a great fit for this relaxed top. My friends on Instagram had a lot of great questions about this yarn. This one comes from Not Bad Brit. Can you really feel the silk or is it BS? That's a great question because when I first grabbed this yarn, I was like, ooh, a little bit of silk. You just don't see that a lot in the big box store yarns. But I will say when working on it, I didn't really pull that silkiness that you expect from silk in a yarn. It's 20% silk. So I was expecting something with a little bit more of a luxurious feel. I wonder if the cotton in here actually just covers up all that silkiness. So Brit, I think it is in fact BS. They say there's silk in here, but I can't find it. Now this question, question comes from Old Sunshine Crafts. She said, did yours have a funky smell to them? I read reviews that said that and I got one and it had the smell too. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, it has a smell. <laughs> Oh gosh, it smells like it's been in a box in an attic for like 20 years. It just kind of has that dried, musty smell to it, which is just not ideal. Now I will say I rarely get too hung up on how a yarn smells when I first purchase it from the store, because if you're gonna block your project or wash it in the machine, that smell is likely going to go away. But if it's going to irritate you while working on it, just know that this does have an odor. Now just going through the responses here, there are a lot of questions of, is this yarn soft? On a scale of like, 
one to 10, I would probably put this at like a four in softness. It's definitely not as rough and scratchy as some yarns that I've worked with, but it's not that squishy soft of like a merino wool or an alpaca, nowhere near it. This feels a little bit more utilitarian, a little bit more like it needs to be worked into something that doesn't necessarily need to be soft. The yarn itself isn't super soft, but I would guess that worked into a garment, it's actually going to feel quite nice on your skin. So there are opportunities to use this yarn, but if you're really just looking for something that's super soft, Touch of Silk isn't going to do it for you. All right, let's move on to the next yarn. Next up, we have Lazy Days. Where Touch of Silk falls short, Lazy Days excels. This stunner is a 100% polyester yarn constructed of a closed chainette casing around long, loose fibers. If you've ever worked with Bernat Maker Home Deck, rest in peace, then you've seen a yarn like this before. This one is a Joanne exclusive, available for $7.49 full price. Lazy Days is a category four worsted weight yarn and the 100 gram skein gets you 179 yards. The palette of 12 saturated pastels just screams summertime and the light sheen of the yarn is an unexpected cherry on top. Lazy Days took just a moment to get into as it's a tad bit slippery, but once I adjusted my tension, I was off to the races. I had no issues with splitting, thus avoiding some of the common pitfalls you have when making a Tunisian crochet foundation chain. You can thank the tubular construction of the yarn strand for that. Crocheting with this yarn was literally a dream. It's super soft with decent slip and it feels like heaven running across my finger. There's also this welcome bounce to this yarn and that's going to encourage great stitch definition and it helps you see your loops a bit better than a traditional fiber. What I found most exciting about this yarn is imagining all the possibilities for its use. The great colors and the light sheen bring to mind garments immediately but I wouldn't stop there. I see applications for this yarn in amigurumi, baby items like blankets and clothing, even home decor pieces like wall hangings or small baskets. The smooth stitching will add a modern feel to just about anything you make. And the amazing stitch definition means that this would be an ideal yarn for practicing new crochet techniques. My only criticisms of Lazy Days would serve to make this already great yarn even better. Now, of course, more colors would be nice. Add in some primary colors, especially, but also two to three shades of everything in between. Imagine a deep teal, a hot pink, or a nice chocolate brown. Also, give us this yarn in more weights. Lazy Days fills a void in the current yarn offerings and could easily take up more space with a bulky or even a super bulky offering. This yarn really has staying power in my opinion. By making it a Joanne exclusive, that likely means we won't see any of these ideas come to fruition, but a girl can dream. Lazy Days gets nine out of 10 hooks for me, not only for what it's already giving us, but for the massive potential that it has. It's incredibly versatile, it has great stitch definition, and it's a yarn I'd love to see on Joanne shelves for years to come. My first make with Lazy Days would certainly be the Frankie Bucket Hat. It seems like the perfect yarn to complement the lightness and clothes structure of this bucket hat pattern. I'm definitely not surprised, but there were a ton of questions about Lazy Days. I think I kind of biased the audience because I was really excited about this one. The first question comes from Blackbird Mountain Designs. She said, looking at the pic, it looks like a tiny version of Burnett Maker Home Deck. I would say yes. Looking at the construction of this yarn and a little bit about the filling, this does feel a lot like a worsted weight version of Burnett Maker Home Deck. Home Deck felt like it was a little bit more tightly packed, so you had more of a cord, whereas this reminds me more of a ribbon. It's a little more flat, but you still get that really beautiful stitch definition. And that's what you expect from Burnett Maker Home Deck. And you get that in this yarn as well. The main difference between those two yarns is that this one is 100% polyester, while Burnett Maker Home Deck had a cotton element to it. So Jess Crafting Things had a really great question. She was asking, how do you weave in the ends on a yarn like this? My main recommendation is going to be to leave yourself a very long tail and weave in as much of that end as possible. Go in multiple different directions directions, have the yarn fold in on itself as you're weaving in the end. The more directions and angles within that tail, the less likely it's going to work itself out of your project. And again, there were lots of questions about how soft this yarn is. On a scale from one to 10, I'm going to put the softness at like an eight. It's not pillowy soft like a mohair or an angora, 
it's still got some heft to it, but it is incredibly soft and just running over my skin. It's just, it's so nice. I just want to make a whole body pillow out of this and like nap for hours. We'll just say I'm a fan of lazy days and we'll move on to the next yarn. Let's take a look at FOMO. If natural mohair irritates your skin, FOMO might be a good alternative. This super soft yarn is made up of 53% viscose, 37% acrylic, and 10% nylon with no animal fibers in sight. It comes in 50 gram skeins of a whopping 328 yards. It's categorized as a category for worsted weight, but I don't believe that for a second. After touching it and crocheting with it, I consider FOMO more of a category two sport weight. Now one skein costs just $3.99, making it significantly more economical compared to traditional mohair. When taking a closer look, you can see the thin strand of yarn surrounded by a downy halo with a surprisingly minimal amount of shedding. I will be the first to admit, Lion Brand really stepped up their game with this one. Mohair is insanely trendy right now, but those with allergies, limited budgets, or those looking to use less animal fibers have painfully few options when it comes to these fuzzy alternatives. FOMO is designed to emulate the feel and function of mohair, and to the untrained eye, it really does that. When you compare FOMO and mohair side by side, the differences of course become more obvious. Mohair has a smooth, fine texture, while the tufts of FOMO collect and bunch in certain areas. Now that's not a deal breaker, just know that FOMO is a dupe, a respectable dupe, but a dupe nonetheless. I was fully expecting to hate this yarn. I rag on fuzzy yarns all the time because they always seem like they're more work than they're worth. But FOMO found a way into my heart with this swatch. I was working Tunisia Knit Stitch and I had no issues working with this yarn on its own once I got started. It was surprisingly easy to see my stitches and my wood hook didn't snag on any of the fibers. I was able to achieve pretty even tension and the swatch itself came out beautifully. The finished fabric is light as a feather, super soft, and it has that haze that mohair is known to bring to the table. Now, to be fair, the haze isn't as uniform as we know mohair to be, but FOMO holds its own, and I really respect that. For this reason, I'm giving FOMO seven out of 10 hooks. It's got a great range of truly useful colors, and it's surprisingly easy to crochet with. Watch out for yarn barf at the very beginning, and consider winding this yarn into a cake before using it to avoid knots. Hold FOMO with a strand of DK weight color-changing cake yarn to make my Old cider cowl, this smooth color transition, and the light haze will result in an ethereal fabric that you won't want to take off. So there's a trend among my Instagram friends. People wanted to know if this yarn is as soft as Lion Brand says it is, and the answer is yes. It's incredibly soft. It's soft on my face, on my skin, and it's wonderful to crochet with. And I know this might be sacrilege, but it's actually a little bit softer to me than traditional mohair is. This question comes from Sandy Bree Creation. She said, do you have to double it? Great question, Sandy, because typically if you're crocheting with it, you're gonna double mohair or you're gonna hold it with something else. Now you certainly could double FOMO, but as you saw from the swatch that I worked up, working it just by itself gives you a really nice fabric. If modesty is a concern for you, certainly double it. You're gonna get a denser fabric that's gonna be a lot harder to see through. Last question comes from Chow Marianne, and she said, how is this yarn? if you have to frog. I'm gonna say this right now. I'm not gonna make up another swatch and try and frog it, but anything that has a halo like this is probably awful to frog. So I recommend going slow, try your best not to make mistakes, but if you do have to frog this yarn, keep a sharp pair of scissors nearby so you can snip any stubborn fibers. That's all for FOMO, let's head to the next yarn. Now let's get cozy with chenille appeal. Several yarns from today's video surprise me, but none more positively than this one. Chenille appeal is a 100% polyester Joann exclusive that's available in 12 timeless colors. Each skein is 284 yards per 100 grams and is considered a category four worsted weight. I'd personally categorize this as a DK weight, but Lion Brand didn't ask my opinion, so I digress. The yarn strand reminds me a lot of Bernat Blanket, but more of a strand than a cord. The fiber around the strand is delightfully lofty and invites you to stitch for hours. You'll get decent mileage out of this beefy little skein, making the $7.49 price tag a little bit easier to stomach. My first impression of this yarn is 
that it is so soft, like brand new teddy bear soft. You know what I'm talking about. Now when crocheting, it has a light slipperiness that you can counteract with a wood hook for a little bit more tension. Now I could tell within the first few stitches that I'd wanna get this yarn close to my skin on that brisk fall day, either as an oversized sweater, a bouncy scarf, or as a massive blanket. Crocheting with chenille appeal was a pure, pleasure. Now I was concerned that the fuzz of the yarn would make it difficult to see my stitches, but the short fibers stayed put and I was able to maneuver through my swatch with no issues. For a yarn like this, which is an obvious crowd pleaser, I was surprised that it debuted with only 12 colors. Now it's a great range to start, but where are the trendy colors? This yarn would be perfect for a rainbow jumper or a really zany multicolored blanket. From a designer's perspective, this yarn is incredibly versatile. I just wish that it was taken into consideration consideration when picking the colors and possibly expanding the offerings. Chenille Appeal gets an easy 9 out of 10 hooks from me. It's a unique yarn that can add a bit of whimsy and playfulness to any project that you use it for. I can see using it to crochet stuffed animals, comfy cardigans, even a bag or other accessories. You might think I'm a little crazy, but I think Chenille Appeal would be an incredibly gorgeous sweater weather cardi. Just think about the softness and the drape. I can barely contain myself from starting one right now. Lots of great questions from the Instagram fam about chenille appeal. First one comes from Handmade SY. She says, how much does it shed? Surprisingly enough, I didn't have any issues with shedding with working with this yarn. I actually kind of beat up my swatch a bit, kind of pulling at it, and I'm not seeing any fibers falling out of here that I need to be concerned about. My guess is that you're gonna have little to no shedding with chenille appeal. That may change after you wash it, so make sure you make a swatch and launder it first. This next question is a really good one. It comes from our friend ETA, Knit and Crochet. She said, would this be a good yarn for a rug of some kind? She asked specifically about my Cheeky Bath Mat, which is in the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. Now the Cheeky Bath Mat is the kind of rug that you put outside of your shower. Unfortunately, this yarn is already pretty slippery and soft, and that's only gonna be accentuated when your little toesies are wet. So I wouldn't use this outside the shower, but if you wanted to make a nice and cushy rug to put right next to your bed, so when you roll out of bed in the morning, you set your feet on just a cloud of softness, then this is a great fit. Just be very careful when you stand on it. It is still a little bit slippery and you don't want to fall back in bed. Or do you? Last question I'll answer comes from Micheline MLS. She said, does it break easily and does it fall apart when frogging? So I actually crocheted a little piece of fabric just to see what it looks like when you frog it. I have just a couple rows of single crochet here. And as I'm frogging, I'm not having any issues pulling this yarn apart. It's not sticking to itself. It's not getting knotted. Perfectly fine. As far as breaking, I mean, I feel like that's pretty average for a yarn like this. Uh, I did put a little bit of force behind it, so I wouldn't worry about it breaking while you frog. But if you happen to need to break your yarn and don't have a scissor nearby, that didn't hurt my hand. So do with that what you will. That's it for chenille appeal. We've got a couple more yarns left. Let's get to the next one. Now onto the yarn I was most excited to work with. This is Landscapes Breeze. The Landscapes line is known for serving some serious color combinations, and this rendition takes it to the next level. Landscapes Breeze is made up of a modal knit tube with cotton and acrylic blown into it. The final look is a bit hazy with short bands of beautiful colors. $6.99 gets you one 90 gram skein with 157 yards. Breeze is marked as a category four worsted weight, but this yarn is thick and gives very Aran weight vibes. The true joy is choosing from the 12 beautiful colors. And since I have most of them, let's go through them together. This is Bay, this is Bloom, this is Coast, Horseshoe, Hot Hibiscus, Lagoon, Parrot, Passion Fruit, Rainforest, Seashell, which is the only color I don't have, Tropical, and Willow. Now let me answer the question that is burning inside of you. Is Landscapes Breeze a good sub for the sadly discontinued Zephira from Hobie? My answer would be, Sort of. Now aside from the fiber content, these yarns are nearly identical. Both feature a chain net construction with fibers blown inside, and they have similar yardage and great colors. The main difference is that Zephira features cotton for its casing, while Breeze features Modal. Modal is a man-made fiber and is generally accepted as a stronger, more absorbent alternative to cotton, giving it a leg up when it comes to breathability and durability. Landscapes Breeze offers a pleasant crochet experience. 
The yarn is smooth and fairly soft. It does stick to itself a bit, but not enough to be annoying. Most of the joy comes from watching the colors transition. Short bands of color with smooth transitions mean that you get to spend just enough time with a single color before it spills into the next one. I didn't even make it to every color in this short swatch, but it was exciting seeing them all come together. The only drawback I found with this yarn is the weight of it. It works up to an Aran weight, and that's not the best option for those breezy summer wearables that I would like to see this yarn worked into. Instead, when you're planning your projects, focus on those transitional times of year, like right now, for example. It's currently late March, and we've experienced temperatures ranging from the 30s to the 70s in a matter of days. Cardigans, shawls, and blankets come to mind for me, and the colorful skeins will lighten the mood even on those gray days. I'm sure it comes at no surprise that Landscape's Breeze gets a generous 9 out of 10 hooks from me. I am a sucker for color, and every single colorway in this collection is truly phenomenal. I feel like Lion Brand's audience has been begging for better colors in their colorful yarns, and Breeze proves that they do know how to do it. Could Breeze be a little softer? Sure. And would it make more sense to have a lighter weight? Absolutely, but I'm grateful to get my hands on Breeze as it is for now, and I'm hopeful that this isn't the only iteration of this yarn that we might see. If you're considering a teal yarn crafts pattern to use with Landscapes Breeze, try out the French Press Cardigan. This would look absolutely lovely in any color, so you might need to make one of each. Lots of great questions about Landscapes Breeze from my friends on Instagram. This first one comes from Crazy Yarn Lady, and she's asking about whether the colors pool or stripe in this yarn. I would say that this yarn more so stripes. The colors will eventually repeat, even though the band of the repeat is very, very long. So the striping is going to become more obvious in larger projects, like a sweater or a blanket. But for my small swatch, you really got to see the colors play out just about every row. This next question comes from Joy Foley, and she was asking what stitches would be most appropriate for a yarn like this. My recommendation is to really lean into these different color changes, and those are going to pop most with simple stitch patterns. For the traditional crochet, I would go with single crochet, moss stitch, even a small granny stitch would probably be very nice. On the Tunisian crochet side, Tunisian knit stitch, simple stitch, even the full stitch would be beautiful and really let those colors stand out. Last question here is from Anna F. Martin, and she was asking if you can expect pilling with a yarn like this. You can typically expect pilling from fibers like wool, acrylic, even cotton, but this has a modal casing, which is going to hold on to those acrylic and wool fibers a bit better, so it's less likely that you're going to get the level of pilling that you would with a Zafira yarn that was cotton based. My recommendation is to grab one skein to start, put this into the washer and dryer a couple times and see what happens to the fabric. Just one more yarn left, let's get into Stitch Soak Scrub. Last on our list to review is Stitch Soak Scrub, another Joanne exclusive. From Mary Maxim Scrub to Red Hearts Scrubby, uniquely textured yarns designed for the kitchen and the bathroom are popping up everywhere. Lion Brand's offering in this category is 100% nylon cord with a hollow chain net construction. These tiny 40 gram skeins give you 92 yards of worsted weight yarn, which actually goes a lot further than you think. One thing to know is that these little suckers pack a pricey punch at $4.49 each, so be sure to catch them on sale. And when you do, you'll be amazed at the fun, punchy colors. There are 15 available on the Joann website, and I want at least one of each. Crocheting with stitch Soak Scrub was surprisingly easier than I expected. Though I would venture to guess that, compared to knitted or even traditional crochet, working this yarn in Tunisian crochet is the most difficult of these three crafts. Once I made it past the foundation row, it was pretty smooth sailing. I don't have a ton of footage of me actually crocheting with this yarn. After the first couple of rows, I lost all of my natural light. Once the light was completely gone, I took this project down to my living room, continued working in simple stitch until I got a rectangle. After I created the rectangle, I slip stitched the foundation row to the bind off row to give myself a tube and I flipped it inside out. So now I was looking at the wrong side of my fabric and as you know Tunisian Simple Stitch has those nubs on the back and I needed all of those nubs to put this yarn to a true test. I pulled three of my actual non-stick pans for this experiment, one of Tfal's signature non-stick pots, a Calphalon classic frying pan, and a copper ceramic frying pan that I found at Target. Each pan got a drop of dish liquid in was scrubbed with my new sponge in hot water. Surprisingly, the sponge didn't scratch 
any of my pots. In some cases, it cleaned off even more residue than I thought could have been cleaned off of these old pots. Now results may vary, but I see lots more of these little scrubbies in my future. I'm gonna give Stitch Soak Scrub seven out of 10 hooks. It's a little bit pricier than I think it needs to be, and it's a very niche product, but it does exactly what it says it's supposed to do, and I really enjoyed working with it. Alrighty, a couple questions from Instagram. This one comes from PM Propson, and she says, is the yarn durable? Does it snap when you use it? So I found it to be pretty durable, and the scrubby that I created held up super well as I was washing those dishes. If I get a length of this yarn, Ow. Ugh. So it will snap eventually, but as you can see, I had to put a lot of force into it. And once you stitch this into fabric, it's gonna become even more durable. This question comes from Marissa Riley. She says, does it hurt your hands when you're crocheting with it? Surprisingly enough, even though this has a scrubby application, it does not hurt at all across my hand. Is it soft? Of course not, it's not meant to be. I didn't find that I had any issues crocheting with it at all. It worked really well with my wood hook. I wouldn't go for metal, it's probably a little bit too slippery, but I didn't have any issues. Last question is from Nalaman. She says, what can this yarn be used for? When I look this yarn up online, I'm seeing a lot of recommendations to make scrubbies for your kitchen, even scrubbies for your bathroom, washcloths as well for exfoliating. I personally think this is the one yarn that I've come across that would make a good poof for the shower. A lot of times you'll see crocheted poofs made out of cotton. All they're gonna do is soak up water, become super heavy, and you cannot wash with those things. But I very much think you could use this to make a scrubby and use it in the shower. I was personally super excited about this entire batch of yarns. There was so much potential and several of them lived up to that potential for me. I'm not gonna lie, I was starting to lose faith in Lion Brand and their ability to come up with yarns that would have some staying power. But this batch of yarns proves to me Lion Brand does remember how to make good yarns. The bummer of course is that several of these are test yarns, which means we're not going to see them after the spring or summer of this year, no matter how much we buy. But I would love to see Lazy Days, Landscapes Breeze, even Stitch Soak whatever. I think these are yarns that could be around for years to come and we will still use them. But unfortunately, Lion Brand said no. Now you may have noticed that there was a whole lot of Tunisian crochet in today's video and that was no coincidence. I did that because my book, The Tunisian Crochet Handbook, is back in circulation. Finally, it has been months that you and me could not get our hands on this book, but it is finally available. You can pick up your copy of the Tunisian Crochet Handbook from your favorite online bookseller. If you can be a little bit patient though, I will have a limited number of signed copies available on my website on April 8th. If you would like an email alert when those signed copies become available, you can find a link in the description to join the waitlist. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. It means the world to me. You can watch even more Yarn Snob review videos in this playlist right here. Thanks so much for watching. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.